If you're a beginner attempting to solve the Rubik's Cube, you may with enough perseverance solve through the first layer. The real challenge, however, comes afterwards, because any meaningful move you can do would destroy the progress you've made so far. At this point, you'd most likely either give up or search for a solution online, where you'd come across these magical moves called algorithms. So you study the steps, memorize every turn, and voila, a solved cube. However, you wouldn't be able to understand what you're doing. You're just executing memorized turns and rotations that magically pop out the solved cube at the end. So how exactly do these magical algorithms work? Before going any further, let's define what an algorithm actually is first. Simply put, it's just a specific set of instructions to sort something out. In the case of a cube, it's simply just a specific set of turns, usually describing something called the Sing Master's Notations. A special quirk about these algorithms are that if you were to undo the moves in reverse order, you'd reach your original state. I know that sounds like I'm insulting your intelligence, but bear with me. Let's say that you wanted to flip this particular edge. If you know how to solve the first layer, you'd probably be able to figure this one out. However, after doing so, you'd find that you scrambled the bottom two layers, meaning that you lose track of all the pieces as you flip the edge, which isn't something you want. You can undo what you did, but you'd also undo the desired flip. But here comes the twist. Before undoing the sequence, if you were to turn the top face first, you'd see that you've not only flipped the second piece, but restored the cube to its original state. This magical sequence of moves is called a commutator, a type of algorithm that changes specific pieces of the cube without changing the rest of the pieces. They work in the form of AB, A inverse, B inverse, where the letters A and B simply stand for specific algorithms and their inverse are just the algorithms done backwards. Here's another example where we want to shuffle the corner pieces. The set of moves labeled A will twist these corners, and just before the undoing A, we'll execute move B, then A inverse, B inverse. As you can see, commutators are powerful tools for manipulating the cube, and there are many different types for many different functions. Commutators are further enhanced by something called conjugates, basically extra moves that you do before and after the commutator. For example, let's say you wanted to move this corner piece all the way back there, but you only know how to commute these two corner pieces. The conjugate here would be setting up the cube in a way where the two corner pieces that you want to affect are adjacent to each other. Now I can perform the commutator and simply restoring the cube to its original state before you started. Armed with commutators as conjugates, you'd be able to wield the cube through any possible configuration that you want. They are the building blocks of most algorithms that you find online. And that's how the Rubik's Cube's algorithms work.